Hello, everybody, and welcome to Friday's Live. Um, very exciting. And I have the dubious honor of being the first Friday's Live host in 2024. So um, welcome to the new year. I'm the one who gets to say that just by luck of the draw, actually. Completely random. However, the rotation works. I landed the first week of January. Um, so I actually think that's pretty cool. So welcome and thanks for spending an hour or so with me um, talking about genealogy this week. I hope that everybody has had an incredible holiday season and a lovely start to the new year. Um, we're all very busy and it feels like we just, you know, got all back to work and just sprinted. <laughs> I immediately went into all sorts of wonderful and exciting opportunities for the coming year. Um, I know the entire team at Fund My Past is just really ramped up to to be doing the work that we're doing this year. So it's it's um it's been a good week, but it's been a hectic week. Um uh, right. So for those who don't know me, my name is Jen Baldwin. I'm the research specialist at Find My Past. Um, and I am joined in the comments today by Liam. Thank you, Liam, for being here and uh, and helping. So everybody say hello to Liam, please. Um, and for those of you who have joined us routinely, thank you very much. Um, we uh, we so appreciate you being part of our family. Like, I, I know we say that a lot, but we really, really mean it. It this community is just incredible and we just we just love talking with you every week um, and being close to our customers it's just so important to us for those of you who are new welcome to the family um, and we hope that you will come back and join us over and over and over again so who's with us today we've got gina uh in lincolnshire i'm sorry that it's cold and damp that sounds like england though I gotta say, <laughs> that's very stereotypical, but <laughs> Daphne's in Somerset where it's very sunny. Um, Jean um, is in Preston. Roz, of course, is with us in Massachusetts. Karen is in London. Oh, first work trip to the Society of Genealogists Library. That's exciting, Karen. I can't wait. Let me, um, um, for those of you who are not familiar, of course, the Society of Genealogists is based in London and they moved buildings and it just opened right before Christmas, the new facility. Um, so Karen, I'm glad you got, got a chance to go in and visit. I actually will be over um, in just under two weeks. Um, uh, so I'm really excited because I get to go see it for the first time as well um, and get a little tour and stuff. So I'm really, I'm, I can't wait to see the new building and the new facility. I think it's gonna just be amazing. Um, all right, uh, Andrew's with us in Lancashire again. Um, sun was out for a, a whopping hour. Uh, Jillian's in Edinburgh where it's damp. Anna is with us. Kim is with us um, in West Yorkshire. Glad to see you, Kim. Um, Mike in Leicester. Le Leicester? Leicester. I have to think about it. I haven't, I haven't tried any, I haven't tried to say UK locations for a good couple of weeks while I was on break. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sue is in Surrey with us. Happy New Year, Sue. Georgia in Essex. Ellen is in Roscoe, Illinois, which I actually have looked that up on the map, Ellen, because now every time I see Illinois, I think about Roscoe. Um, Anna is with us and Gina and oh, I said that they're all saying hi to Liam and I'm repeating myself. Okay. <laughs> um, Flo's in Oregon and it's so good to have you with us. Um, Yep. Okay. Weather reports. Yep. Oh, David, first time viewer from Irvine, California. Well, welcome, David. We're so happy to have you with us. Um, you will find, I think, that the comment uh, section on the video is pretty active. Um, so if you have questions or ideas or suggestions, feel free to just dive right in. Um, such a great community. Um, and everybody's just incredibly helpful and friendly. So, um, oh, and Andrew's saying, he's saying, well done. So I must've gotten one of my pronunciation rights. That's good. Um, <laughs> Gordon's with us and Martin down in Cumbria, Janet's in North Wales. So all over the place today. Um, that's great. Um, fantastic. So we are going to do our usual, of course, uh, we'll talk about new records and new newspapers. Um, and I'm going to show you some of some of the little gems that we have found in some of the new material. We have a new product feature to talk about a little bit today. But of course, uh, we're going to we're going to spend most of our time on the question of the week. Um, and Sheila in Lake Havasu City in Arizona. Uh, that's fun. That's one I know how to pronounce for sure. Um, <laughs> Um, so let's start with the question of the week. And I think it's probably pretty predictable, but I want you to think outside the box here. Um, what is your 2024 family history ambition? So that could be 
research related, obviously, that could be um, something to do with living family, right? Uh, maybe capturing oral history or some stories or um, spending more time with your second cousins that you met on the Find My Past tree. That could be a thing. Um, one of mine, just to kind of get you thinking um, a little bit broader than just your research, although that's very important, obviously. One of my ambitions, and I don't, I don't like Maybe it's just semantics, but the word resolutions doesn't feel right. And then goals doesn't also feel right. That feels too like, um, like I'm going to be held to something. So I like ambition. Um, <laughs> that's how I usually phrase it. Um, I am going to make an effort to be healthier in my research. So I've actually spent some time over my break readjusting my desk and where my monitors are sitting and like looking up and making sure that I, everything is situated for someone of my height ergonomically, um, like making some ad small adjustments to my monitors, my chair, my desk, um, how I put my keyboard in front of me, all of those kinds of things, because I spend a lot of time at my desk and I often do not feel great when I walk away. Um, and I think it's time for me to kind of be smarter about that. So one of my ambitions for the year is really to focus on my own personal health while I'm in the, because, you know, when you get into research and you're like really into it and you kind of zone out on everything else, like it doesn't really occur to me in the midst of that process, what's happening around me. Like I don't think about my physical environment. So I'm going to try and make a habit of every week coming in and making sure that everything is set the way it needs to be so that I can be healthy while I'm doing my research. So that's one of my um, family history ambitions. So um, start pulling in the comments. I'm sure you already have. Um, and, and let's start talking about your ambitions for the year. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is basically it, right, Liam? A good risk assessment. That's essentially what I'm doing <laughs> in business speak, right? Like <laughs> very much. That's that's uh, that's well put. Um, okay, so, um, oh my gosh, this is fantastic, Sarah. Tuning in from the hairdressers with foils and everything. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. That's a, that's amazing. That's incredible. I hope your hair looks amazing when you're done, and I hope you're really pleased with it. Um, it's always good. <laughs> um, all right. So let me kind of in the in the spirit of being um, physically healthy, let me um, share my slides. But I'm going to do that by making some slight adjustments um, before I actually pull them up. Um, so you um, can see everything and I um, feel good. So of course we have to start with a happy new year message, um, right? It wouldn't be um, the first session of the year if we didn't acknowledge that. So happy new year to everybody in the Find My Past family. Um, I think I've said that already once, but I'm going to say it again. Uh, I just feel like this family is so special and this community is, just brings so much to the experience of family history, right? Doing family history in isolation isn't really that much fun. You kind of get lost in, 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 and it's lonely, actually. Um, so um, working together in a collaborative way is really important. Um, and I certainly for me, my personality, I really like working with other people. I'm, I'm quite gregarious and I'm not shy. Um, and as my colleagues will tell you. Um, so it is really wonderful to have this group and to even just go into the Find My Past forum on Facebook and read through the comments and see how people are helping each other. Like I, I just think it's really wonderful. So um, modern technology allows us to do that. And I think it's fantastic. Um, so happy new year to everybody and thank you for being a part of our community. Um, all right. So let's talk about new records. Uh, this week is all military, actually. So we added a bunch of stuff to the Coldstream Guards collection. Um, so this isn't, um, they're new records added to the same collection. So when you go into the all record sets, um, you can still, you still go straight into Coldstream Guards to, to access this new material, um, but it's all right there. So um, the, the material that's been added um, spans 1800 to 1981, which I know is a really big range. Um, but we have um, some albums that have been added in, which are so cool. And then we have attestations that have been added in. Um, uh, images alongside both of those. Um, so there are almost 18,000 
records from the photo from the albums, and then just shy of 500 attestation records added. Um, so a nice uptake to Coldstream Guards, especially in the sense of just like it's, it's just some really visual and really compelling pieces. I'll show you in in a in a minute what some of those look like. They are so cool. They are very cool records. Um, the second set that we've added to this week is the London Regiment Surrey Battalions uh, from 1914 to 1940. We added about 3,500 new images and transcriptions to that collection as well. So you have a little bit more work to do if you have um, people in, uh, in those battalions. And then on the British Army service records for the, we've added the South Wales borders for 1890s and then 1915. Um, and that is not as big of a collection, just around 700 records and it's transcripts only. There's no images there, but if you happen to have someone um, from that region, it's definitely worth taking a look. Um, let me show you a couple of examples. So um, the, uh, the records that I'm going to show you actually were identified by one of our colleagues. I take no credit here. Um, Charlotte was actually able to find these and, and kind of pull them together for us. Um, but I thought some of them were absolutely great. So these are from the albums that we added. So at one point, um, they were seeking out the most handsome man in England. Um, and they sent telegraphs. <laughs> this is 1915. Um, telegraphs. Um, through the Coldstream Guards in Aldershot. And this, there was a whole series of these telegraphs that have been scanned and put into the collection. But I really like this one because it says at the bottom, I always said so from Nanny. <laughs> I just thought that is so like, that's just cool, right? Like that is, that is a family member or a, a loved one or someone or a friend or, you know, someone actually like, you know, adding that personal touch and that personal message. So this campaign for the most handsome man in England actually was, you know, was nationwide and it certainly wasn't limited to the military, although I think there were a lot of military entries. Um, and, and so people sent photographs in. Um, uh, essentially to newspapers and such. So we have some of those clippings as well. So um, so in the albums, you have things like these telegraphs and documents, but you also have newspaper clippings and actual photos, um, which is which is fantastic, right? So you're gonna get a huge range of material in this collection. Um, so what you're looking at is a newspaper clipping um, from the Daily Express, um, who, because someone has submitted this photo of Sir John Gowan Karen Paul um, as a reply to the handsomest man in Britain pursuit. Um, and then the second one, of course, is um, an actual photograph that was submitted, more of the handsomest man, and it's a soldier next to a tent, right? no shirt. Um, you know, it just it's it's just such fun material. Like, really, really have a good time with this. Um, when I went in to look at the materials for the first time, I just went and, and just clicked image by image by image and just looked at it. I lost a lot of time um, to this collection yesterday. So, really, really cool stuff. Now, this um, these clippings um, is at the top of one page of one of these albums or scrapbooks. Um, and then what I thought was really interesting, actually, and kind of fun, was the bottom of that same page actually had something completely different on it. It's a letter from the Columbia uh, Graphophone Company um, in London, and they are sending a letter to the commanding officer saying, we've received a, basically a purchase order from a soldier. And what we'd like to know is, is this man reliable Will if we send him a radio? Um, and is that what... It, uh, yeah, a wireless receiving set. If we send him one of these, will he actually pay us? <laughs> I think that's basically what it's saying. And the response at the bottom is, oh yeah, actually this man's quite right. It's fine. Go ahead and send it, send it over. He'll, he'll make sure that you get your money. Um, I just, like, that's so awesome. Like, I would love to have that in my family history. Like, I just think that's the coolest thing, right? I, First, first to know that your ancestor ordered a radio, but then secondly, to know that the, the company that he ordered from was checking up on him. And then third, that the commanding officer was like, yeah, he's, he's a good egg. You can do that. Um, just so cool. Uh, but these albums have all sorts of stuff in them. So you'll often find as well um, actual photos, right? Like, like this one. Um, this is a full squad photo from the Second World War. Unfortunately, in this case, there's no captions, um, but they are gorgeous photos, gorgeous images. So well worth your time to kind of scroll through some of these um, and, and just have a play because th these materials, it, you just are going to come up with so many different random things. I have one more example to show you that, um, that I really liked as well. And this one actually 
um, one of the reasons that I liked this one so much is because it is like it is fully on a genealogy project, but it's also an, a, a bit of um, artist pre preservation. So what happens is this grandson writes a letter to the Coldstream Guards and says, hey, my grandfather um, was born on this day, the only son of of this father, you know, of his father, youngest son. Uh, and so you have three generations right there in the first sentence. So Arthur Thellison was born 13 September, 1826, the only son of the honorable Ar Arthur Thellison, youngest son of the first Baron um, Hendelson, I think is what it is. Um, so three generations in the opening in the opening sentence, right? And then it talks about his military career. So he purchases his commission as an ensign in the Coldstream Guards on 10th December, 1847. And then it goes on and he explains that on his voyage, um, he was aboard a particular vessel and, um, and where he served and kind of where he was going. But he drew, a, he sketched out what he was seeing. And the sketches are quite artistic and lovely. And so basically this grandson is saying, I have these images, I'm sending you a copy. And, and he lists out what all of them are. So then the response letter, which is the one that you're seeing next to it, um, it, back to him is saying, thank you very much for your letter about your grandfather. And they actually went through and pulled a little bit more information about his military service and got a little bit more specific about um, his experiences, right, in the Coldstream Guards. So you have kind of this oral account of like a family history account of this is what my grandfather did. And then you have the military coming back and saying, this is what your grandfather actually did. Um, and, and they match. They're not very different. But you have both perspectives side by side, which I thought was so cool. And then, of course, you have the actual sketches themselves. And maybe they're paintings. Um, oh, oops, I clicked too far. Let me. And so the first one that, so there's almost all of them have kind of this long description on the back, which is like that small inset image of the handwriting. Um, so it's it's not just a sketch. It's like a, it's a painting of something. I'm not an artist. I don't, I don't know these things, but um, it it's so detailed and they're so pretty, right? And like, so you get the image and then the description from the person who actually did the artwork on the back. Um, let me show you the other one because it's a little bit brighter and maybe a little easier to see. And I made it full screen. Hang on. There we go. I mean, it's just gorgeous, right? These are beautiful. So this is, you know, a soldier's interpretation on his first trip away from, from England. And I just like, that's amazing. Like, that's so cool. And all of this can be found in the new update to the Coldstream Guards collection. I, so we've gone from unit photos to artist renderings to, um, you know, letters back and forth. We have um, the handsomest man in the world, newspaper clippings, um, actual owned, you know, photographs that were submitted, telegraphs, letters from radio companies. Like this collection is just really, uh, really amazing. If you want to talk about, you know, kind of context of your ancestors and the time they lived and, and exploring their world from a their viewpoint, man, this collection is spot on. Um, so yeah, really, really cool stuff. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to scroll over here. I'm going to look at some of the comments and see if anybody is. Um, oh, lots of about, yeah, he looks like Errol Flynn. Yeah, I kind of thought so too. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Oh, we got into a discussion about Robin Hood, did we? Okay, that's fun. <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> Disney's Robin Hood. Yep, yep. It's a good color, right? They do look like watercolors. Um, it's a good show. It's a good. It's a good story. Um, how come that's not working? There we go. Jean says they do look like watercolors. They're brilliant. I agree. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah, so fun, fun collection. Have a good time exploring those, um, and see what you come up with, um, and and share. Right, um, go to the Find My Past forum or or contact us and let us know what you find. Because um, I actually looked at this family. I started creating a tree for them and and such to see if I could just quickly kind of map out like some descendants. But um, I didn't spend that much time on it. I might go back to it because I would love to talk to somebody who still possibly has the original scrapbook or something. I, I don't know what happened to the original. It's cool though. Um, okay. Do I have a favorite Robin Hood? Um, 
that that's um i don't know um maybe the kevin costner version what, what um i'm not sure but that's because i grew up with it um but probably the disney version i'm gonna go disney on that one fun fun story okay um, that's new records for the week. Let's talk about newspapers. Um, we have one addition, one new title to the newspaper collection this week, the Coleraine Times. And shout out to Mary for helping me learn how to say that correctly. Um, 513 issues spanning from 1990 to 1999. Uh, that is, of course, an Irish paper. Um, so um, a good modern addition to the archive this week. And then the list on the other side of the screen is all of the updates that we did this week. So we added to Cork Daily Herald and uh, the Liverpool Daily Post and the uh, Worthing Herald, um, a couple more modern years in there. There's some older stuff in there. The Northampton Herald got an update from 1844, which is fun. Um, yeah, all sorts of good stuff in the newspaper archive this week. Um, if you um, haven't been watching the blogs, do make sure that you are keeping your eye on both the Find My Past blog and the British Newspaper Archive blog. Um, they both talk about the new materials, but in but they take different approaches. They're written by different people. You know, it's, it's a different set of stories. So do make sure that you're kind of watching both of those um, if you don't already. Um, and um, even more exciting, we actually also have a new product update this week as well. And it is, of course, um, related to newspapers. I made a new banner. I hope you guys like it. It's going to scroll across the bottom of the screen. So what we did is we added the ability to search on front pages only on the newspaper. So this is on Find My Past not on British Newspaper Archive, okay, find, find my pass only. Um, so I'm doing a search, a phrase search. If you haven't played around with phrase flexibility yet, do that as well. But I'm searching on New Year's resolutions because how could you not this time of year? Um, I've put my time frame in. I'm looking for the 1900s. And I'm looking, I want to look at front pages only because I want to see what the headlines are, right? Like what are the big things that people are talking about? Um, in the 1900s when it comes to New Year's resolution. So if I click on that front pages drop down, I get this very simple toggle switch, results from front pages only. If you hit that, that's what turns on and you see the filter kind of over on the side by the dates in that little green bubble that you know you have it set to front pages only. Um, and of course your search results change right away. Um, and I have 255 matching results for the decade. I picked one randomly. Um, I liked the third one down on the list from the Lancashire Evening Post from 1907 that says something about, I will not endanger my health by buying boots. Um, and I thought, I really want to know what that is. It is, of course, an advertisement, but I loved it. It's fantastic. Uh, the resolutions from Dilworth Abbott, the golden boot. Um, <laughs> he resolves, I will not endanger my health by buying trashy boots. I will not waste my money in paying exorbitant prices for the same. So, of course, um, with comfort as necessary and appearances of being valuable, I will buy my boots from Dilworth Abbott. I loved it. I thought this um, ad is very sassy and it's just great. Um, and again, this is, you know, what, 1907? So, yeah, well done, Dilworth Abbott in 1907 in Lancashire, um, in Preston, actually. Um, so uh, just thought that was fun. And that gives you the chance to play around with these front page only search, which is the new product feature on the newspaper search. So um, very exciting to see. Uh, always exciting to see product uh, changes and experiments and tests and features being added to the website. So um, hope that you enjoy that and play around with that and give it a go. See what happens. I'm going um, to turn the banner off now. That's pretty, I like that. That's pretty handy. That's pretty nice. Kind of slick. All right. My newspaper search for resolutions also led me to some really lovely content. Um, I was actually quite delighted to find um, this particular entry. It's from the sketch um, from also from the early 1900s. And it's a poem that's written by um, a woman, Nora Chesson, I think is her last name. I, I tried to kind of zoom in on it a little bit. Um, it is I, admittedly kind of hard to read, um, but it's a quite lovely sentiment about kind of saying goodbye to the former year and welcoming in the new year. I also just really love the artwork with the castle and like kind of the moon setting and everything with the ivy vines. I thought it was very pretty. So well done to the sketch as well uh, for 
celebrating that new year and bringing us in with a, a lovely poem. So if you get a chance, um, take a look at the sketch from the early 1900s and see if you can find uh, Nora's poem as well and read through for yourself her take on New Year's Eve. Uh, it's quite nice um, and um, a, a quite peaceful little way to kind of approach our new year together. And that, of course, segues us back into the question of the week, where we talk about your ambitions for your family history journey in 2024. And I have to admit, I also really like this photograph from the Find My Past photo collection. Um, it's quite nice, right? That woman standing there kind of contemplating the man in the background on the trail. It's very, it actually hits me as a very colorado e style photo, although it's from Wales. Um, <laughs> so I really got to get myself to Wales is what I think. Um, so what is your ambition for your family history journey in 2024? That is our question of the week. We're going to go into that. I'm going to stop sharing slides um, because I like it better when I can talk to you guys. Um, all right. So let me get everything back into position over here. I can take the post-it note down that tells me how to pronounce Coleraine. <laughs> um, I uh, literally have a post-it note right next to the camera, so I don't forget how to say it. Um, all right. So let's see. I know that people have been um, answering the question of the week. So let's scroll back up a little bit and see what you guys are up to for the year. Um, and what you're hoping to accomplish. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. All right. So I think Karen was the first one in. Solve the last third great grandfather mystery. Who were his parents? That's a big one, Karen. That's a pretty big objective. I wonder. Um, so first, I hope that you um, have a lot of evidence already built up and you are well underway on that journey. Um, uh, secondly, please do update us on how you get on. I think, you know, maybe I'll set my calendar, like, let's check in once a quarter on these, on these goals. Do you think we could do that? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll come back to this topic and we'll have to check in with each other and hold each other accountable on these. Um, so, um, Karen, good luck uh, on his third. And if we all send positive vibes, positive energy, I think that will help as well. So everybody think good things for Karen. Um, William, I think the ambition would be to solve clues at Q next month when I take a friend to the National Archives for the first time. Cool. Uh, missing the warm weather on the South Coast a lot colder in Cumbria. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. Um, so good luck, William, at TNA. And I hope that your friend has a wonderful first visit. I very clearly remember my first visit to TNA, and it, it's a special moment, I think. It's really, it's a fun archive. Love going. Um, I will be there uh, when I come over uh, to London in a couple weeks. So um, that'll be good. Looking forward to going back. Um, surely my ambition is to find where my grandfather is buried. He died in Manchester in 29, but cannot find his grave. Well, that's interesting. With such a recent death, you would think that that would be a, hmm. Okay. A little bit of a mystery there, Shirley. Again, keep us posted. Let us know how you get on. Um, I'm, I'm curious about that one. I wouldn't have thought that um, a 1929 burial would be so difficult. So that's interesting. <laughs> Jackie is hoping to visit Ireland to see family graves and areas lived in. Oh man, Jackie, can I come with you? <laughs> I really, really, really want to go to Ireland. And I really want to do these things. I want to see family graves in the areas that, that they live in. Um, yeah. <laughs> I need a winning lottery ticket, though, too. Um, Gordon spending a week in Salt Lake City. Now, it, Gordon, is that an ambition or is that scheduled already? Because um, that's a fun one. Um, I'll be in Rootstack. I'll be in Salt Lake at least twice this year for Rootstack and then for the British Institute in October. Um, so maybe we will cross paths. I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, Kim, I'm going to finish my great grandfather's life story this year. Okay. That's a big ambition. I love that. Already several chapters in and meeting up with newly discovered second cousins. Okay. That's really cool. That's um, several chapters. Th that's a pretty incredible project. And Kim, I hope, um, I hope that uh, it's going well. Um, I want to acknowledge how much work is going into that because that's a that is a big undertaking. So congratulations, well done, and um, I think we all look forward to celebrating the end of that project with you um, and celebrating your success. 
Um, Andrew says, taking one more look at an area with poor record survival. Mm -hmm. I have more experience these days. Oh, okay, that's great. That's a good comment, actually. It's important to go back to the research we've already done, right? After we learn a few things and we get a little bit more time under our belts. Yeah, well done, Andrew. Good for you. Um, yeah, but, you know, areas with poor record survival is tricky. So, you know, possibly um, expanding um, that record perspective as well. So all the best, Andrew. Let us, again, I'm going to tell, I'm going to say this to everybody. Let us know how you get on um, and, and keep us current and updated on that effort. Um, and yeah, yeah. And if, especially if you find something interesting, you know, archival visits, museums, um, historical societies, all those places. Um, so best of luck to you, Andrew. Anna's got a um, a good project going, it looks like, it to sort at least a good portion of the photos and other records from her mom's old house before she moved to care home last year. I have many, many unlabeled photos. A big project. Again, a very big project. Um, and again, I think ambition is the right word here. <laughs> I start these things and then I have a hard time finishing them. So Anna, um, best of luck to you. Um, sorting through all that stuff can be really hard um, emotionally, but also like it's time consuming and, and finding a good way to organize things. And so that's a big one. That's a good one. All right. Um, Jean says, trying to find out what can, what she can learn about her mom's side of the family. She was adopted, but didn't want anything to do with her birth or adoptive families. Both either. Oh, so I have no records for them and only a few names. That's a tricky one. Um, I would imagine you're probably using DNA. Um, and if you're not, you should probably think about it, um, especially for the adoption side of that. Um, but good luck, Jean. Um, hopefully you have some success there either way. Um, Gina just simply says, I want to just spend more time on this, more time doing research and more time adding to her tree. So, um, you know, Gina, I think one of the things that I like is, um, and I don't know, maybe other people in the in the uh, stream have suggestions, but there's really a lot you can do in like 15 minutes or 30 minutes. So, um, you know, make yourself, uh, that's how I started doing small tasks in research. I just made like a big giant list of all the things I thought I could accomplish in like 15 minutes. Like maybe I'm, I'm just going to sit down, I'm going to just search newspapers for this one thing or this one town in, in this decade and see what I come up with. Um, and then the next 15 minute bracket is sitting down and actually organizing those search results and going through them in detail and going, all right, you know, the, putting things in chronological order, this is what I've learned, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so Gina, good luck. Um, we want you to spend more time searching too. <laughs> Hello, Kim is manifesting positivity. I don't know what this is in relation to Kim, but um, I'm sure it's from your project. Um, that is a good vibe to have. So yeah, send, send it to uh, send it our way, everybody's way. <laughs> Janet wants to visit the grave of her four times great grandfather and also finish several articles for family history society journals, which are half done. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I will say best of luck to both of those because those are two very different things, but um, I wonder how far away that grave is and how difficult it is for you to get there. Um, so um you know, and, and do you go in the winter or the summer? Like lots of logistics, some logistics to think about there to get the best experience, especially if it's far away. Um, those articles, submit them, get them in. <laughs> no pressure though, no timeline. Um, Jillian says there's still so much to learn and find and learn about. Some branches of the family tree with unusual surnames and employed in jobs that no lo which no longer exist which is such a fun thing to pursue, right? So interesting to learn about um, how occupation changes over the decades and periods of history. And like, you know, the technology advances that made it so that a job doesn't need to exist anymore, right? Knocker uppers, I think is one of the favorites examples of that for uh, lots of people. I still see lots of articles on knocker uppers as a, a job that doesn't exist anymore. Um, um, so that's a good one. Uh, Sue saying she just wants to tidy up her tree. That's a good task. Hey, going back and looking out over, over all the details that you've included already and, um, and getting it all kind of nice and cleaned up and organized. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's time well spent, especially, um, as you get, as Andrew said earlier, right. As you gain more experience and you get a little bit better and you get a little bit more savvy and like understand, um, 
a bit more about how the hobby works and and how we all function together. Um, yeah, I think I think that's um, I think that's a good one. Okay, um, Victoria is actually joining us just after a funeral, so I'm very sorry for your loss, Victoria. Um, but she says it was so lovely to see many photographs um, of this individual through the decades, a perfect way to celebrate his life. Well, I, I think that's a very nice sentiment, Victoria. So thank you for joining us um, on a day such as today. Um, but also um, thank you for reminding us that a celebration of life is, is actually a really peaceful and healthy thing to do, in my opinion. I guess I should say. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, so Isabel actually left a comment, a little bit of feedback for us, which I want to make sure that I address, although I know Liam also um, commented back to you, Isabel. Um, she asks, are you going to improve the search for military records? It's hard to wade through them when so many have the same description. Um, and yeah, yeah, it can be. Um, it can be hard and it can be overwhelming. So let's just acknowledge that straight out of the bait, out of the gate, right? Um, uh, military records are often very repetitive as well, um, but you do really need to look through them all. So my suggestion to you, Isabel, um, would be if you find one that is the person you're looking for, or you think might be the person you're looking for, search on his um, service number. Um, which if you go into the military subcategory on Find My Past, you'll see that in the advanced search screen. Um, if you scroll down towards the bottom of that screen, there is an option to search on a, an individual service number. So if you put in um, just that number and possibly a surname, depending on how common commonly that number was used, you'll refine your search in a way um, that makes it a lot more efficient for you. Um, so if you haven't tried that, do make sure that you take a look at the advanced search on the military category um, and plop in that service number so that you can, even if it's someone that you just theorize might be the right person, right? That's a, a quick and easy way to find all the records that apply to that person. Um, and then, um, you know, even go through the process of elimination if that's what you need to do. Um, but as Liam said, we'll pass on the feedback as well to the team and make sure that they see that um, and and see if we can do anything. Sometimes we can and sometimes we can't. Um, so just, you know, kind of be aware of that too. But we will definitely take that into consideration. So thanks for the feedback. Um, I'm starting to get into the comment thread where you guys are talking about Errol Flynn. So that's a good one. Um, <laughs> um, back to question of the week. Um, Sarah hopes to catch up with her mom's family and share the finds that she's made already. Yeah. Um, she, her mom would have been 90 this May, but her twin brother is still in Manchester. Oh, that's really cool. So you have your uncle that you can share with. Um, you know, I will admit there's, um, there's not much that inspires me more than sharing my findings with my family um, and getting their reaction. Um, my dad is especially good at this. Um, even if he really is does, doesn't have any interest in it at all, he pretends really well. Um, and and I, I pull a lot of energy from that. So um, I hope that you get the chance to catch up uh, with your mom's family too, Sarah. It's it's a really great moment. Um, do, do, do. Okay. Um, um, well, yeah, question of the week. I'm still I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Okay. Ellen says um, her objective this year is to resolve the Kirby family conundrum, which I really like the way you've worded that, uh, as well as finally getting all the proof that my six times great grandfather loaned money to the American Revolution so it can be added to the DAR's list of patriots. I, um, that's interesting. He loaned money so that he could be added to the list of patriots because the timeline doesn't work. Um, sorry, you've got me thinking. Um, I've been thinking a lot about the American Revolution this week, actually. Um, evidence for the American Revolution that he, um, loaned money. Um, so then to the American side, the colony side. Um, so those records, if they exist, are probably going to be in the individual state in which he lived. Maybe in the DAR files themselves. Um, I know you didn't ask for any advice, but like you've got my brain pondering. Um, it, you know, if he if he's if he's 
been added to the list, then they would have information on him. Although, of course, depending on the time frame, you need to take that with a bit of a grain of salt because they didn't have as strict policies back in the 1800s as they do today um, about lineage. Hmm, that's an interesting one, Ellen. Uh, you've you've definitely got me thinking a little bit. Um, there's certainly lots of people who loan money for the war effort, and not just money, not just cash, but but materials, right? Um, they would give the army a, a sheep or a cow or a goat or something, or, um, you know, a bale of hay or some grain or some beer or something to kind of keep them going. Um, it's an interesting one. I like it. All right, Ellen. Um, I definitely want you to follow up on that with me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Six months, Friday's live. How about around July 4th? That seems like a good time. I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to do my, I'm going to put it in my calendar. I really am. It's going in the diary. All right, Karen, her, um, uh, her ambition for 2024 is to get notes up to date. Look at, I'm, I'm so short that you can't, I'm going to do this. <laughs> get her notes up to date and add them to the files. I keep written and print and rec printed records. So I can show my parents that they're not online or have a computer. Yeah, makes sense. If I get my 2023 research in some kind of order, I'll be able to see more clearly where I need to focus next. That is exactly right. Um, I want to spend some time doing social history and link it with my family tree. Love that. Um, as far as where they live, jobs they had, filling in the gaps and at least trying. Um, I, so that there's a lot in that statement. I applaud you for trying to organize your research and get everything together. It is hard to manage offline as well as online. It's a lot of um, admin work really to our to add it on to the hobby, right? Um, and you, of course, you know, I love my social history. So I am all about the second half of this, <laughs> of this ambition um, today. I, yeah, yeah, bring on the social history for sure. Um, yeah, that's a great one, Karen. I hope that you are very successful in all of that. Um, and I think that keeping it offline for the benefit of your parents is really important. So um, that's a that's a really good one. That's a good one. Um, <laughs> Liam, this is the best comment I think I've seen uh, on Friday's Live all year. Well done, Liam, all year. Uh, come for genealogy to stay to talk about Robin Hood. <laughs> Um, all right. I see we have a couple of newspaper suggestions in here. We will definitely um, take that back to the newspaper team. Thanks so much. Um, doo -doo -doo. <laughs> Kim, I have hoods in my family tree, just no Robin. That's too bad. <laughs> uh, um, okay, let's see. Uh, doo -doo. Okay, Robin's question of the week. Um, have been researching for over six years. That's great. That's fantastic. Um, I now want to delve further into the lives of my members on my family tree rather than tracing them to build a tree. Yeah, right, right. Making the switch now from the lineage focus or the pedigree focus into the lives, the day-to-day -day life. Um, I think that's I think that was when I when I hit that point as a researcher, um, as an individual, I think that was the moment for me that I was like, this is really my deal. Like this is this is so much my jam. Um, so I'm excited to see what you find, Robin. And um, um, and I hope that you find a lot of good stuff because um, there's so much out there to explore. Pickles telling us I want to spend some time this year visiting churchyards and taking photos to add to my files of uh, incredible pursuit. Um, you know, it. It is a little bit like um, the the geography kind of always strikes my mind, right? Because if I wanted to go see photo, you know, go take photos of like my my maternal side um, churchyards and graveyards, I'd have to go. I, I think it's like eight hundred miles or something. Um, so yeah, hmm. <laughs> go go do those things and get out there and explore the countryside and explore the, the villages and the places where your ancestors were. It feels like it's really far away, but I promise you, I mean, you know, it's all relative, of course, but um, yeah, it's well worth it. It's well worth it. I my, think my favorite trip still so far, a couple of years, well, it's been, it's been a few years now, I guess, actually. Um, I went with my parents to um, Nebraska um, where my ancestor, our ancestors had a homestead and we ended up have, stopping and having lunch at this little like cafe. It was like the only place to eat in this tiny little town. Um, and, 
Um, and the guy at the counter was like, you know, why are you here? Like you're strangers. Um, and we were explaining that we were looking for his homestead and the guy, you know, four seats down was like, Hey, I know exactly where that is. Actually, my friend so-and-so is now the farmer there. And he took us there and we knocked on the front door and he introduced us and like had this whole, and he let us wander around the property and it was, just, it was amazing. It was great. So get out there, get out there into the world, talk to people and see the spots. It's really good. Um, so David actually saying he won a free year subscription to Find My Past at the 2023 British Institute, which I was also there with, um, with you, David. Um, and I want to spend time learning how to effectively integrate using the site and records for my England genealogy work. Yeah. Um, love it. Absolutely love it. Um, uh, so um, my advice to you, David, would be to join these calls, um, but also make sure that you're communicating with our support team, our customer support team, if you get stuck and if you have any issues. Um, you can reach them at support at fundmypast.com. Um, and they are amazing, fantastic people, and they will help you um, every step of the way. So, um, so uh, all success to you, David. We hope that you really enjoy that subscription. Um, Isabel comes back with a question of the week response. Record my uncle next time we talk about family history. <laughs> This is a great one, actually. And I think, um, you know, something that I really wish I would do more often, too. Uh, yeah. Well done, Isabel. Um, definitely make those recordings. And you know what? Nothing should be stopping us. We all have recorders, like, in our pockets, right, with our phones these days. You can literally just hit the record button on the camera, and you're good to go. Um, I even did it once kind of discreetly. Mm -hmm. um, where I was kind of like, I had my phone propped up, like I was looking at it, but really it was just recording the whole thing. Um, it was uh, kind of bad of me. I should tell people that I'm recording, but it was my dad and he knows, he knows. Um, he also records me all the time without me, without telling me. So yeah. Um, all right. <laughs> Victoria is going to stop. No, oh, sorry. I misread that. Never stop asking questions that enabled me to fill out more life stories. I need to find out where my several times great grandfather came from with the Napoleon Lake and to prove or disprove it. I love the way you started this actually. Never stop asking questions. Um, yeah, right? <laughs> what else can you say about that? That's it, exactly. And I think it's one of the reasons why all of us do what we do, right? Is because we're the type of people who can't put it down. Um, and, and we, you know, we, we can't help ourselves but to get deeper into the rabbit hole. Um, it's instinctive almost. So yeah, well done, Victoria. That's a great response. Never stop asking questions. Um, mm, oh, Gordon. Yeah, this one, this is true. One of my great grandfathers was buried in a pauper's grave. Very hard to track down. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. I didn't think about that with that Manchester 1920s deal. Um, anyway. Yeah. Good, good, good. Um, Victoria says tips on how to photo archive would be great. Um, I'm not sure if you're asking for the blog or not, but I think that's kind of what you're saying. Although I see Liam already responded, we'll see what we can do. So we'll definitely, um, we'll definitely try to pick that one up. But also I would say, um, make sure that you download the Find My Past app. Um, Cause scanning photos and grabbing that metadata, even from like headstones and stuff is pretty easy now um, with the app. You, you know, it's easy to scan a picture, add it to your tree. Um, it identifies all the different individuals in the photo. It, you know, you can do all sorts of nifty little things with it. So if you don't have the Find My Past app and you haven't played around with it yet, um, make sure that you do that. So you're adding material to your online tree. And I know that there are people who don't like to add that stuff online. That's okay. That's fine. Um, I use it as a backup, right? I have, I have um, a hard drive sitting in my office that has kind of all the stuff on it, but I have I have material on my Find My Past tree as kind of my backup so that it's in the cloud a little bit as well. Um, yeah, so I don't know, think about it, but um, but definitely play with the app. And and like Liam said, we'll see what we can do on, on some kind of a, maybe a blog post or something would be good. Um, I might be able to write that, Liam. I'm not volunteering though. <laughs> don't write, don't put me down yet. Um, okay. Um, do, do, do. Oh, Kim's got a great comment with help from the Find My Past forum. Yay, forum members. I am one step closer to finding my third great grandmother's parents. A possible brother was listed at her address in 1862 and his birthplace was listed. There's some good clues there for sure. Keep chasing that down. That's exciting. Um, 
Roz just wants to make a regular routine for research instead of being so hit or miss. I think I'll accomplish more. I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're definitely right. Um, start with, well, you could start however you want. Um, but I always start with a very specific research question and I literally write it on a post-it note and put it on my desk. I, nothing more complicated than that. Um, but that's that's where I always start. Um, and and that post-it note helps keep me grounded in, so I don't fall down those rabbit holes because there's lots of them. Ambition from Mike is to create a scrapbook of newspaper clippings for my grandfather who led a very public life. Okay, yeah. So your newspaper research is probably pretty fun. Um, and then as you do that, it's probably easier for you to track when we add new newspapers for the region and you can see what you've already hit and what you don't have yet. So very good, Mike. I like that one. Um, oh gosh, there's a lot of comments and I am not going fast enough, I think. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Gordon caught my joke. The year's not very long yet. You're right, Gordon. <laughs> um, uh -uh. Oh, that's a nice comment. Thanks. Hearing your story, the Nebraska trip sent shivers down my spine. Great. You found the homestead feeling inspired to do a bit of research traveling now. I really, I can't recommend it enough. I know it's hard for a lot of people and it's hard for me too. Like logistically, it's really tough. I'm going to have a teenager at home and I've obviously got a full-time job and like, you know, we can't plan every family vacation around my ancestors as much as I would like to. Um, so it, yeah, it, it can be really hard um, to get into that. But once you do, man, it is so rewarding. Even just going to the local library um, where your ancestors lived, even if you can just spend, you know, a couple of hours, like go in and talk to the librarians. Don't scan the shelves. Go in and talk to someone right away at the research desk um, and and let them point you to the right material. Like even that is, is very rewarding, I think. Um, and yeah, if you get lucky that you find a small community and someone can just be like, yeah, let me help you with that. And, you know, it's even better, right? Um, yeah. And Victoria, adding to this conversation a bit, gravestones can give such an insight. Found the first wife of someone I knew nothing about and with it, a tiny headstone for their very young daughter that died. Very moving. Made me realize that the wife mentioned in a census, a second wife and the children, her, her stepchildren have to rejig the tree now, fix the relationships. Yeah. Same. So same thing, actually, um, that Homestead in Nebraska story, that same ancestor um, when we found his headstone for the first time, which it wasn't online or anything, like there was no images or anything that we could identify, um, we realized that it actually said that he's buried with an infant that we knew nothing about. Because, of course, in the States, there's no civil registration like there is in the UK. So I actually never known about this baby. Um, and and turns out she was their last child. Um, and she was born when the parents were significantly older than the rest of the kids. Um, but we didn't know until we actually saw the headstone and it has her name on it. Um, and then we were able to kind of backtrack and get some records. So yeah, really well said, Victoria, in terms of like, you know, they can really give a lot of information. It's not just about going and seeing and kind of remembering that person and honoring their, their burial place. It's also about adding to your, your context around that person. Um, do, do, do. Oh, Shirley's got a great suggestion. This is a good one. I don't think I've ever heard this before, actually. Um, but excellent, excellent advice. Find Popper's details. Um, to try to find Popper's details for burials, try the overseer's accounts as they pay for the burial, including the beer. Very important to record these things. And and Shirley, you have um, given a fantastic example of a piece of advice that I give often, actually, and I think a lot of us really pay attention to, even if we don't know it, right? And that is to follow the money, right? It always makes me think of that movie um, about the 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 sports agent dude. Someone will know what I'm talking about, where he's like screaming into the phone, show me the money. That's what I think of. That's my mental image <laughs> when I see comments like this. But you're right. Follow the money. Um, and and um and see what that paper trail looks like. Um, yeah, really, really good, Shirley. Thanks for sharing that with us. Um, uh, Liam, I'm going to ask you to uh, scratch this from the record. I <laughs> did not. <laughs> um, all right. Um, oh, this is a good idea, Victoria. Blog about um, preservation and then and then follow it up with a live session. Yeah, we might be able to squeeze that in this year, I think. Um, I'll talk to Liam. We'll see what we can do. Um, all right. Oh, yeah. Jerry Maguire, that one. Yep. Thanks. Yep. 
that's the one. All right. <laughs> I'm not I'm not a movie person. Um, okay, so um, gosh, it's almost the end of the hour. That went by super fast. So uh, lots of great ideas for ambitions around family history this year. Um, I'm going to finish with my my second one. I have I have two. Uh, the first is to be healthier and do my risk assessment every week, as Liam said. Um, but my second is to practice paleography. Um, I have been working on some materials just in the last two weeks or so that have gotten me down kind of some, you know, 17th century rabbit holes that are absolutely fascinating, but I find that I am really out of practice um, with paleography. So I am going to try and focus on that. Um, although I have a very busy year already. Um, many of you know already that I'm, I'm um, in teaching a course in October. And so most of my year is going to be taken up with prep for that uh, effort. Um, but the paleography thing, I really, I really want to get back into. Um, I, I really enjoy it. It's very challenging for me, but I think it's a lot of fun. Um, but it is something that I really need to practice or I kind of lose. This. It's like reading, it's like in a foreign language, right? Like if you don't practice and stay on top of it, you kind of lose some of that skill set. Um, so I really need to get back into paleography. That's what I'm, that's what I'm really, that's my second ambition. Um, so with that, I think we're just about ready to close out for our first session of the year. Um, I'm just, uh, looking at the comments to just make sure that I haven't missed anything. Um, uh, but I think people have been pretty well covered. Um, so with that, I will go ahead and close out for the year, for the, year, for the week. <laughs> um, next. Oh, oh, there is one thing I forgot. Oh my gosh. I almost forgot this. Okay. Liam, get that link ready that I sent you. Um, next week, this is very exciting actually. So next week there is a session um, from Hidden Histories. Um, and it is um, for the Women's Prize for Nonfiction event that Find My Past is sponsoring. And our very own Rose, our newspaper expert, is going to be part of the panel. They'll be di discussing how to research um, women in in historical records. I've already signed up as a register um, to, to attend the event. It's free. It's online. Um, it's next week. Um, e Ellie, oh, sorry, <laughs> Liam has shared the link in the chat. Please do register and watch. There's a couple of historians on the panel as well. Um, and it's just going to be excellent. I'm really, really excited for it. So um, women's research, hidden histories for women, um, make sure that you sign up and, and, and tune in for that and watch that. It's going to be an excellent session. It is free. It is online. You don't have to do anything. Um, just... Um, just pop in. Um, and I think they're taking, you can pay for it if you want to be more engaged and like ask questions and stuff, but you can sign up as a free attendee. So um, please make sure that you, you tune in for You watch that. It's going to be excellent. All right. Um, and I think Victoria has left us with the best way to close this out. Um, oh, not that one. That's the wrong one. It, clicked. There we go. Wishing you all the very best for this coming year. Let's smash those brick walls together. Um, and, um, and good luck with all of those goals for the year. So we'll report back as we go through um, and have a wonderful weekend. So everybody have a great weekend and we'll see you next week for more Find My Past Fridays Live. <laughs>